Hey guys, uh, happy Monday. My name is Ashley and I am the founder of the Fitness Leader Institute. And I wanted to jump on, um, I usually jump on Mondays to help answer some of the frequently asked questions that are happening in the group. And uh, I wanted to actually answer some very specific questions today all about how to get your beach body business up and going. Um, I know there are a lot of coaches in the group that are quite new and I really want to talk to and speak to those things today that are being asked the most. Um, so I'm going to answer three questions that I've gotten this week. Um, so hopefully this is going to be super helpful for all you guys that are that are new out there. So the first question comes from Amy. Uh, Amy says, I'm Amy from Ottawa, Canada. Canada represent. Um, I'm also in Canada. <laughs> um, I've been a coach for three months and I need to learn how to put myself out there and get people interested without being pushy. So this is a question I hear all the time. How do you put yourself out there knowing that you are selling a product, but also knowing that typically our networks are built of friends and family and it can feel a little bit, um, it can feel uncomfortable sometimes putting yourself out there and, you know, hoping that people are going to bite on what you have. So the biggest piece of advice that I can give you about this is that it's all about serving your audience and always serving first. So what I mean by that is when you're going online, um, it's not about um, talking constantly about Beachbody. It's more so about helping to educate people. It's about teaching them something new that they don't know showing your behind the scenes of what's going on. It's sharing some customer testimonials. As you guys will notice, like I'm not talking really at all about Beachbody itself. I'm sort of doing it in a more passive way. So that is really how you're going to get people interested is more so talking about the value consistently. Um, and every, you know, they say like one in every seven to nine posts is a call to action where maybe you're asking someone to drop an emoji if they're interested or to take some sort of action with you, you telling them what that action is. So that's more so how you want to plan out your content and what you're sharing versus um, just showing people the Beachbody product and then hoping that they will bite on it. Um, I think that that can often, like from the outsider point of view, that can feel like this person's just trying to sell me something. I'm not really getting any value from it. Um, so it's really, uh, there might be some people that have read that book out there by Gary V where he says, jab, 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 hook. That's obviously a very like aggressive way. I feel like a very like masculine way to describe it. How I like to think about it is more like serve, 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 sell, right? So serve your audience first. Then after um, you know you've had those seven to nine posts, then you can um, ask them for that call to action. The other thing that I found super super helpful um, is to think about it this way: um, if you think about your hand, there's five fingers there, right? So your thumb is fitness um, and health, right? It's not beach body; it's fitness and health and all those sort of things, right? The other four fingers are things that you also talk about. So you're not just going to talk about um, fitness and beach body on your page, right? Um, you may have a cute little dog, a cute little puppy. Um, so maybe that's something you talk about. Maybe you also have a really big love for cooking and cooking local. That's another thing you're going to talk about. Maybe another thing is personal development, and that's really important to you. Um, and then maybe the last one is gardening and or do-it-yourself projects or something like that. So you really want to spread out the things that you're talking about because people will um, really want to get to know you. And if all you have is fitness and they're not there yet, they're not going to be able to relate to you. And that's a problem when you're deciding, like, should I follow this person on social media or should I not? You really want to be able to provide them with an array of things that speak to your personality, not just one thing, because, you know, we all know, we've all been on a fitness journey before. If you're not 100% there yet with being into fitness, like, you're, pro like, I'm going to be real with you guys. Like, when I'm not feeling my best, like, I snooze people that are like, look at my abs, look at this, look at that. Like, I don't want to look at that. Like, I want someone that can relate to me that is real. Like, so 
I'm just kind of coming at it from more of a maybe your ideal customer sort of stance. Like if they're not there with their fitness, like then you got to spread out. It's got to be a buffet, right, of different choices, not just like one meal that they're ordering up. So maybe think about it a little bit that way. Um, next question I have is from Heather. She says, I'm from Louisiana um, and just became a coach last week. Would love to hear the best strategies for building my business for long-term success. This is a really great question, um, Heather, because I think sometimes what happens is people can get into um, you know, an online business like this and they will go into it like, oh, if I, I will continue at this if I'm successful and if I see results right away. Well, let me be really real with you guys. Like when I first got like my first online business going, like it, it took a lot of tries at different things to figure out what it was that I think I was really passionate about and what I wanted to do. And like, if you're looking at this, like, okay, I'm going to do it if it's easy versus I'm going to do it because I love it and I'll just keep working at it. Like those are two very different opinions. So I think first of all, like got to be really real with yourself and know that there is, uh, there are some challenges that you're going to face no matter what. It doesn't matter how easy it is in the beginning because no matter what, when you are doing something that you're learning, there's going to be opportunities to solve some different problems. So how are you looking at it? Are you looking for proof that it's not going to work? Because you're going to find it. Or are you looking for an opportunity that there are problems I can solve, but whoa, pinch me. Like this is my job. My job is to figure out um, like who connects with me and what sort of message do I need to put out there to find my ideal people? Like it's all about how you look at it. So I think first of all, you are just phrasing the question in really the right way. The best strategies for long-term success, because this is what it's about, right? Fitness is the long-term game. Like, you know, there's a lot of people out there that get into it and they're like, oh, I lost the weight and I'm good. Like, this is such a long-term thing. It's not just a one-hit wonder. People need support all the way through the process. And we really got to be thinking long-term with, with um, our own businesses and how we put ourselves out there. So just had to get that out of the way. I'm off the soapbox onto the real strategy. So when I think about long-term success and what's really worked for me, I'll give you guys a super quick synopsis of my story. So I've been in the fitness industry for about 16 years now and most recently the last job I left I was president of a fitness company um, in British Columbia and um, I there was a seven month time period that I went from working full time to I'm on my own now and I'm running an online business and I'm making six figures so it was a really really quick transition that, that happened but I think what's different about this time because now I've been um, helping coaches for two years coming up in October. What's been different about this business is I really connected to my why. Because I had started lots of online businesses in the past. Everything from like baby bed sheets to scarfings to art, like all these, like I dabbled in all these things and nothing lasted. And that's because I didn't really have, it wasn't hitting the right chords for long-term success because I wasn't deeply passionate about scarves. Like, not at all. So I think, first of all, long-term success really comes from that why. Why do you do what you do? Do you really love this? And where do you really, you know, you get that feeling when you help someone, if this is your thing. Like, you get that feeling of, like, I can't believe someone is paying me to talk to them about fitness and how I changed my life and how that's going to help them. Like, that's got to be there first. Your values, I think, really have to be aligned in the business that you love doing this because when you love doing something, you'll get through the tougher things because every business requ requires actions that sort of make us uncomfortable at times. So I think that's the first thing, really making sure you're doing it for the right reasons. The second thing is coaches do one of two things. If you have two coaches starting off, one of them will look to what other coaches are doing and um, they will feel like I've got to replicate it 100% and they have those training wheels on and they keep doing those same things without really defining their voice, who they are and what their purpose is. The other coach, the one that I see become really successful is in the beginning, yeah, they need those training wheels. They start off with um, sort of, you know, their mentors and the people around them maybe done for you posting plan. They start off like that but their goal is to find their own voice and find out why they're different. 
um, I think a lot of people um, maybe become, they feel like a bit suffocated, like in a sea of sameness, like every coach is doing the same thing and I've got to keep up with this. And what starts happening is you spend more time watching what other coaches are doing on social versus posting for yourself. And of course, that is a recipe for feeling um, I'm not good at this. It's not working for me. I don't have my own following. And like that, like ninja in your head starts turning in the wrong direction. So that is not the path to success. Like a long-term success strategy is get stop following other people and what they're doing. If you put that time into your own content, serving your own audience and think about why you're different. Like don't be stuck in this mentality of like, well, not as fit as I want to be. Like tell me why you're different than other coaches out there. Like I'm still in the middle of my journey and I've been trying a long time to get there. So I really deeply understand what you're going through too. Like that is a differentiating factor. That is something that people will pay attention to. Not the same old, same old, like I'm fit. Like look at me, look at my abs. I work out five days a week. Like anybody that's not exercising, they don't care. They want to know how do you, like, for example, if there's someone that likes to have wine, how do you manage wine in your uh, routine when you are on a weight loss path or you're on a fitness journey? Like, talk about the stuff that may not seem, um, you know, in the fitness world really catchy, but I'm telling you, on the outside, for all those people that want to live a really real life, that stuff is really cool and really important. So don't be afraid to pull out those strengths. Um, and really like lean into those things that really stand out in uh, in a world that there are a lot of coaches that maybe you see on the daily. I think the last thing about that is just, just really remember like when you start engaging with fitness coach stuff like other fitness coaches, your feed is gonna be full of it. I had a conversation with my therapist about this. I was like, I'm telling you, I feel horrible about myself. Like I haven't worked out today and I'm seeing all these coaches like, They've just been working out. Well, here's the thing. Like, if that is what you are inundated with all the time, like, this is what I had to do for myself. I had to take a step back and say, look, like, I can't start my day with social media and watching what other coaches are doing because I'm just going to feel bad that I haven't gotten up at 6 a.m. and done my workout. So that is something that you really want to, um, you know, take into consideration how you start your day, how you are showing up because it can really kind of screw with your brain if you if you don't think about that um okay so last question here um i am going to uh talk about ashley uh another coach named ashley uh hi ashley i live in upstate new york i've been a coach for a few weeks and i'm hoping to learn how to get people to join my team and see others crush their goals okay cool so let's just talk about recruitment here just for a second when you are a new coach wanting to recruit other coaches so one of the best tips I can give you about that is um, keep mining out who you are. Like the more that um, you put yourself out there as being like who you really are, like if you're like a tatted up, like badass girl, like Gretchen, my, my girl Gretchen out there, um, I will tag her in this post actually because she is just like blowing me away. Her realness, her like real mom life stuff. Um, and she talks about like overcoming addiction. Like she's just so honed in to who she really is. And she shares that. Like she is going to attract people that um, have that similar story that you already have something in common. So I really think that that is at the foundation of all of this is put your real, real self out there first. Because your um, then potential co uh, coaches are going to be watching you and they, you already have something in common. Right. And we we do business with people we know, like and trust. Um, so that's really important. Be like really real with putting that that stuff out there, who you are, what you stand for. Um, the second best tip I've ever heard is assume everyone will want to become a discount coach. So what that means is whenever you are um, like asking for the sale or asking for commitment, however you want to think about that, I always think about it as asking for the commitment. I want this person to commit to me um, in, in us working together. Um, you're always going to give them what's called an option close, meaning, um, you know, which option is better 
better for you, this or this. So in that option close, you're always going to assume that they're going to start to become a discount coach. That's how I got started is, um, and I don't actively coach, um, but I am, I do a lot of uh, like leadership retreats with coaches and I actively drink Shapeology. I actively work out doing quarter force right now, which I'm loving anyhow. Um, but when I first got started, my coach was like, well, if you, if you're really committed to this, like the discount is so worth it. Um, because if you're drinking Shakeology, like you're going to save that amount. So you might as well just get started as a discount coach. And I did because I was like, yeah, I want to save money. And it feels really good actually every time I get my Shakeology to know that there's that little discount off. So I don't want to stop coaching, like coaching. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like I don't want to give up that discount because I love Shakeology. So I'm going to keep on running with it. Um, but that is really important. That option closed right from the beginning. Um, if you need some scripting on this, like I would definitely recommend talking to your upline about it and see if they have anything like sometimes uh, like your upline will have something very specific they use um, but if this is something you guys are like wondering about um, just drop it in the comments and I can definitely um, put a freebie of some sort together for you guys so um, yeah so those are the three questions I wanted to answer for you guys today um, and so on Mondays I'm gonna come on live and answer any of your uh, questions so um, you can definitely post your questions here um, for me to answer next week and on Thursdays I'm gonna be doing a quick tip episode and what that means is I'm gonna be taking you guys behind the scenes um, and showing you how to do something um, on your might be your Facebook page might be on Instagram it just might be something that has really helped me in my business so this week if you haven't checked it out Make sure you go back. I uh, dug into how to get the right language from your ideal customers and like surveying your audience because I hear that all the time. People are like, oh, I'm not getting engagement. Well, you probably don't have the language your ideal customers use. So that, that video is going to speak to that. Um, other than that, guys, I hope to see you um, if you've joined the monthly marketing strategy. We are starting up for September. Um, and that is coming up. So super excited about that. It is, um, there's a bunch of new stuff happening. I'm not sure if, how familiar you guys are with the marketing strategy, but I create done for you posts, um, which is great for new coaches, just getting their, their kind of footing with it. And then coaches that want more hands on, like they want an email series, they want, um, challenge posts. Um, all that sort of stuff. The challenge posts really focus on taking challengers and turning them into coaches. So all that stuff is available. If you guys have any questions, so happy to help. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I will um, I will see you guys on Thursday when I come back uh, live with a quick tip. All right, guys, have a great week. We'll talk to you soon.